The change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction is typically expressed right alongside the balanced equation for that reaction. For example, up here, we're looking at the balanced equation for the combustion of methane, and immediately following it, we have the change in enthalpy, the delta H, for that particular reaction. Notice the sign of delta H negative. This tells us that this reaction is exothermic or that it releases heat. Also notice the units on this value of delta H. It is being expressed in units of kilojoules per mole. These units, kilojoules per mole, per mole, allow us to express the heat that is being exchanged in terms of any reactant or any product in this balanced equation. In fact, we can write a series of conversion factors that will give us relationship between energy in units of kilojoules and moles of any reactant or product in this equation. Let me show you for example. We could say that this reaction releases 890 kilojoules of heat for every one mole of our reactant CH4. And the reason that I'm using one in this particular equality is that the stoichiometric coefficient for CH4 is one. We could also say that this reaction releases 890 kilojoules of heat for every two moles of oxygen, O2, that are reacted. And again, I'm using the stoichiometric coefficient of oxygen in this particular expression. We could also say we have negative 890 kilojoules of heat for every one mole of CO2. And last but not least, negative 890 kilojoules for every two moles of H2O. So no matter what the equation is, um, when you have your balanced equation, you could always express delta H in terms of any reactant or any product as long as you're maintaining any stoichiometric coefficients that might be present for that reactant or product. So now that we have these, these look like conversion factors, and again, these are conversion factors that allow us to form a relationship between energy and quantity of any reactant or product. Let's look at a couple of examples of how we could use these conversion factors. In this first problem we're looking at, we're being asked to calculate the delta H when we react 5.8 grams of CH4. Just like any one of these types of problems, like any type of stoichiometry problem, whenever you are starting with units of grams of any molecule, the first thing that you should always do is convert that into moles of that molecule using the molar mass of the molecule. For CH4, the molar mass is 16 grams per mole. And in this step, we are converting out the units of grams. And then once we get into units of moles, we want to multiply by a conversion factor that will allow us to cancel out the units of CH4, moles of CH4, and convert into joules, uh, joule, in units of kilojoules. To do this, we're looking for the relationship between kilojoules and CH4. We can see from this equality that we have negative 890 kilojoules for every one mole of CH4. When we do the math on this, we will end up with a value of negative 320. The units this time are going to be just kilojoules. We don't have kilojoules per mole anymore because we've canceled that unit out. Here's a similar problem. This one is asking us, kind of coming from a different angle, if we would like to release 500 kilojoules of heat, how many grams of oxygen are necessary? So for this problem, we do wanna start with the quantity that's been provided to us, 500 kilojoules. This time when we are multiplying by a conversion factor, we want our units of kilojoules to be down on the bottom because we want that unit to cancel. We're looking for a relationship between heat and oxygen, O2, so this is the conversion factor that we want to use in this problem. We want two moles of O2 to be up on top and negative 890 kilojoules down on the bottom so that those units can cancel. The question is specifically asking us how many grams of oxygen we need, so we do need one more step where we convert out of units of moles of oxygen and into units of grams oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen. And this gives us 36 grams of O2. Whenever you're doing problems 
related to using Delta H, there's a few things that you need to look out for. So first of all, what I've done here is just simply copied the exact same balanced equation and Delta H from the previous slide. First thing that you need to do always is pay attention to the states that are associated with every reactant and product. If you change the state of any reactant or product, that will almost certainly change the value of Delta H. So I've copied the reaction from here into this position, and I've also copied the value of delta H. If I were to change the state of any one of these chemicals, like if we changed this from H2O liquid to H2O gas, this actually changes the value of delta H as well. So in this type of reaction, the value of delta H is negative 802 kilojoules per mole. So if you are looking up chemical reactions with delta H values, make sure that you're always matching the states to make sure that the delta H values will be the same. Another thing that you need to pay attention to when you're looking at delta H values is the stoichiometry of the reaction. This is actually kind of logical, but if you change the stoichiometry of the reaction, this also causes the value of delta H to change in the exact same way. So let's say, for example, that I doubled this whole entire reaction. So instead of having one methane molecule, I had two. Instead of having two O2 molecules, I had four. Instead of having one CO2 molecule, I had two. And instead of two water molecules, I had four. If we double everything about this chemical reaction, we're also going to do the exact same thing to delta H. It's going to be doubled. Likewise, if we tripled it, tripled all the stoichiometric coefficients, we would triple the value of delta H. If we cut the stoichiometric coefficients in half, we would cut the value of delta H in half as well. Last but not least, you need to pay attention to the direction of the reaction. Now, this one is maybe not quite as intuitive. If a reaction were to run in the reverse direction, so if the products were instead of being products, if they were reactants, and if the reactants were the products, so this is a reaction that's moving reverse. This, when we reverse a chemical reaction, this also reverses or flips the value of delta H. So, if the value of delta H for this reaction in this direction is negative 1604 kilojoules per mole, then if we reverse the reaction and we run it in the opposite direction where CO2 and H2O are the reactants and methane and water are the products, this causes the sign of delta H in this case to change from negative to positive. Doesn't change the magnitude, but it just causes the sign to change.